everyone. I'm so excited for you to meet my friend, Ashley. Ashley's in sunny California while I'm in sunny Florida. And her story has been a huge encouragement and inspiration to me. And I know it's going to be for you. So Ashley, welcome to Becoming Me.TV. Thank you. <laughs> and to kick it off, like, why don't you just share who is Ashley? Well, hi everyone. Um, my name is Ashley Kelly and I live in Sacramento, California with my husband, Noah. And I, let's see, I graduated from Vanguard University with a kinesiology degree, but am kind of navigating with what to do with that as of now. Um, and yeah, this past um, year, two years has just been an amazing journey, just um, walking through just a few things that I'll share and um, it's kind of the overall general thing but some details I love um, group exercise and my sweats I love my sweats and um, super strong coffee I'm a big coffee drinker um, I love all things lavender mm -hmm. and yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> I don't know uh -huh. girl we're like soul sisters oh <laughs> my goodness which with group exercises do you have like a class that you like or I routine? do it's kind of embarrassing but it's called body shred with Carol it's that's awesome. and she's this like older lady but I don't know it's just so there's something about working out together like in community um, that, I mean, it just, it's, I love it. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. That yeah. has transformed my fitness in the last year. So I couldn't agree more and lavender and sweats. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We're best yeah. friends already. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Crazy. And strong coffee. Oh yeah. Oh. I know who likes the weak stuff. I know. <laughs> no, not this yeah. girl. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, you know, you mentioned your story and I've had the privilege of hearing your story. Um, and so I'm excited for our, our becoming community to hear as well. So why don't you just take some time and unpack your story and your journey? Sure. I have some notes, so I'm not very good. You Girl, know. you're good. Be on track. So um, I guess my story kind of revolves around uh, freedom from doing. Mm -hmm. I um, have just been change, I would say, to a life um, of just performance and um, kind of enslaved to perfectionism. That has just been just such a struggle um, for me ever since I was little. And um, yeah, so that's kind of like, I don't know, like my theme song, I guess, of just just learning to be free from like seizing, striving, and actually to start being. And so um, I'm just so excited because I finally feel like God has taught me so much in um, just now, like living out of what he has done for me instead of what I can do for him mm. and just learning to really stop my hustling um, for everything good in me is simply a reflection of Christ in me and mm. kind of bringing it back full circle. Like that literally is the gospel of grace and um, but kind of bringing it back though. It wasn't always that way. Um, my root issue, I believe, kind of in why I was so caught up in all that was just that I was not living um, in alignment with God's word, with the scripture. Um, and that kind of sounds like when I say that, it sounds kind of like theological and dry. But um, it's so true. Like I wasn't allowing God's word to wreck everything in me. Mm -hmm. um, and so over time, as a result, I think that I just grew really hostile and stagnant. Um, with what he was trying to set me free from, which was a life enslaved to doing. Mm. Um, and I mean, it wasn't in like this overall, like huge life-changing moment. It was just like, I was serving the Lord and, you know, other areas, but there was just this like, like deep root that was just needed to be like pulled. And there was dirt under my fingernails that, you know, needed to just get, get rid of. And that's kind of what that like this really is about and um and kind of here's how it looked um the things in my life that I had absolutely no control over they really like really bothered me mm. uh, I remember when I was little my room had to be perfect I had to be extremely neat um it had to be impeccably clean um and that again kind of ties back into childhood my dad had a terrible drinking problem growing up. Um, so things were always really chaotic and messy. Um, so naturally, you know, like I looked for a safe place. Um, 
And I would label, like literally I would label everything under the sun, which sounds kind of cool. Like I had my own little labeler, but I mean, (laughs) what child does that? Honestly, like there was something really wrong. Um, So unfortunately, okay. So my coping mechanism of organizing and making everything perfect um, turned on me as I became an adult. And I sort of just became bound by it all, like slowly in the mundane little things. Um, like I said, performance, perfectionism, striving, doing more and more, just kind of suffocated any joy that I had in my soul. Um, these deeply rooted sins and struggles started to just add up. Um, it was like subconsciously, my soul kept repeating me, do more and be better. Um, again, it was a subtle thing. It wasn't this like blatant like thing in my life. It was just in the very little things. Hmm. Um, So subtly but surely those four words, do more, be better, crushed all peace that I had inside of me. Um, You know, time after time, I would try so hard to fix myself. Um, Yeah, I still craved that structure, that order, which ended up looking like me trying to create my own peace um, in the form of endless to-do lists and hardcore planner ism. And I use the word ism at the end of, you know, planner because to me, my planner was seriously a form of worship. Mm -hmm. Um, And I realized that, okay, oh my goodness, like anxiety is just a temporary form of atheism. Like we, whatever we worry about is so often um, what we worship, you know? Mm -hmm. And Cleaning, again, became so compulsive. Everything, I mean, everything had to be in its proper place, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, I would kind of lose it inside. Um, And it it sounds nuts, and it honestly kind of was. And I was just so paralyzed by messiness and disorder and clutter was my arch nemesis. I mean, just ask my poor husband when we first got married, you know, like, he would purposely mess things up when I wasn't looking in hopes that I would just be able to take a chill pill and relax um, without the obsessive need to have everything in its, you know, proper Mm. place. Um, He would kind of place, he would place sticky notes just around the house, um, reminding me that A, I'm good enough and B, that I need to slow down and stop like the scrambling for control. Um, that I needed to trust in the one who made me, that I needed to release this white knuckle death grip Hmm. that perfectionism and performance had on my life um, for so long. Like it wasn't just this like overnight thing. It was like, again, slowly but surely. Um, And that's like where the enemy I feel like totally comes into. If we like really pull back the curtain, um, he is, he works in a very cryptic way. It's confusing. He um, it's, it's, camouflage in a way and so I didn't necessarily know like I would just write it off and say like oh you know like I'm just a type a person like you know, look at how organized I am or whatever and um that was just kind of his tactic to get me to believe like I'm enslaved to this like there's no hope for me there's no rest for me um and that kind of just goes back into also what I learned of, I think we often focus too much on overcoming our weaknesses and our hangups, um, getting rid of those things and reaching this so-called Christian maturity. Um, and we sweat through various spiritual exercises mm-hmm. as if they were designed to produce like a better version of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and that's kind of, that idea comes from the book on the Ragamuffin Gospel mm-hmm. and I love this quote and I keep having to like remind myself of this because it's not like, oh, boom, you know, like I'm free and I never struggle with this ever. It's just like, uh, you know, I constantly have to be active in that. And it says, though lip service is paid to the gospel of grace, many Christians live as if only personal disciplines and self-denial will mold the perfect version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. The emphasis is on what we do rather than what on God is doing. Um, In this curious process, God is simply a benign old spectator in the bleachers who only cheers for us when we show up for our morning quiet time. Hmm. And I mean, like, I've totally felt that way for years, um, time after time, and I still occasionally do. Hmm. Um, That's why it's so important for us to be on our toes, um, like reminding ourselves of the crazy wild love that he has for Hmm. us. And, um, you know, like, the book kind of also continues to say like Jesus didn't come for 
just the super spiritual, those who have it all together. Um, he came for the wobbly and weak need who know that we don't have it all together and that um, we're also not too proud to accept the handout of amazing grace. Mm. And um, I use like, I literally used to tell myself um, there was, I don't, I had this phrase that I would always tell myself of, I used to tell myself that if Britney Spears can pull it together in her 2007 meltdown, so can I. (laughs) And that was like my motto. And looking back, I'm like, dang, like, that's kind of funny. But also, it's kind of like an awful way to think, Mm -hmm. you know, like, it's not the gospel isn't about picking ourselves up by our bootstraps day after day. Um, It's not about how much I can perform and how much how many things I can make perfect. Um, It's about being it's about pressing into what he has already done for us. And um, I just yeah, like I just wrote that life is not about how many things you can get checked off your to do list. It's not um, about any of that stuff. Life is about living out of who he says we already are, whole, beloved, redeemed. Um, I mean, like he's already made right what we made wrong. And so, you know, like he's performed on our behalf so that we don't have to anymore. And that he just has such a single relentless stance toward us um, that he loves us no matter what. And for the burnt out and enslaved like myself, um, that is just really, really good news. You know, like, Mm -hmm. um, It's not about getting your stuff together. It's not about, you know, life isn't found on a list. It's not your plan. My planner doesn't lead to peace. Like, even though I really believe it in those moments when I struggle, um, it doesn't. And, and that's kind of just my story. Like I just really, it's just not just the gospel. It's the gospel of grace. And that set me free. It's freed me from a life of inescapable doing that I thought, you know, like, Oh, my life is just going to be exhausting. I just, you know, all this endless striving I just thought was inescapable. And I no longer feel, um, you know, like that I have these to-do lists that resemble this never ending treadmill. Um, I no longer place rules and regulations on my shoulder, um, shoulders. I no longer anxiously strive and by, um, his grace, I'm able to just look up from my planner and consider the wildflowers, um, like in scripture, it says that they do not toil nor spin. And the gospel of grace has changed my life because I know I now know that God is in control and I no longer have to be. Um, and it's just amazing, even to take it one step further, because it's not just good news, like, or it's sorry, it's not just good advice. Like when people give us good advice, like we have to actually do something about it. You know, like we have to take it to heart and change ourselves. And Um, the gospel is called good news because all we can do is simply receive it. And, um, so yeah, that's kind of just my story, I guess. So good. good. I relate to your story so much too. It's actually how, um, and why becoming even started. Um, cause I struggled with perfection, goodness, my entire life. And then I was reading a book and I saw that word becoming, and it was like, God laser focused told me like, Emily, I didn't create you to be perfect or to get everything done or to do, do, do. Like I created you to be, to be mm-hmm. becoming who I made you to be. Uh, so yeah, I tattooed that on my wrist. That's as a reminder. And yeah, it's so a girl. Oh my gosh, your story. Um, I totally relate. And it is a battle. Like it is such a battle. Um, cause I think intrinsically we are even trained to go do and yeah, do, 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 do. And, and that's what is successful all mm-hmm. around us. So it's so countercultural. Um, it's hard, but it's so worth it. Mm-hmm. So worth totally. it. Totally. So, um, if you were sitting across from another woman and you're hanging out, having really strong coffee, um, <laughs> surrounded by lavender, um, yeah. what would you say to encourage her on her own becoming journey? Um. Well, I actually thought about that and. You know, like it's easy for me, like I just said all these words, but mm-hmm. we walk away and we forget like 90% of what was just said. It's just how our brain works, I guess. And so I kind of just kind of had to bring it back in um, of just, okay, what are some like tangible and like practical ways, you know, like mm-hmm. we can encourage each other. And just the first thing is that, you know, like for me, what helped me to change I guess all these things and to walk away from that life of just like (laughs) just doom and despair was just that I realized that my life doesn't have to be 
um, this way. And that now um, is the time to be undone. And that was like 2016's like theme song in my life of just, you know, be undone. Like be, you just keep, you know, like let it all go. Like, mm-hmm. um, and you know, like, and then tying it back into scripture too, because it's so important is just um, in Philippians three, it really talks about how, you know, like what we, once we, what we, you know, realize, um, and that what we thought were all important things, um, is really nothing compared to yesterday's garbage. It says, Mm -hmm. um, compared to knowing Jesus, like our healer. And, um, you know, like he totally is that for me, like, even as a physical healing, like I've had to walk through some health issues and which, you know, those kind of things just ignited more of the perfectionism and performance. Cause again, I couldn't control what was going on in my body. And, um, but just really remembering that, like, what I think is important, you know, um, is really nothing but yesterday's garbage comparing to knowing Jesus. And, um, the, the second verse kind of goes on to say like, and when it counts, I want to be found belonging to him, not clinging to my own quote unquote righteousness, um, based on the law, but rather actively relying on the faithfulness of God. And so I guess that's just what I would encourage is to just, um, you know, like be found in these things. And, um, I also, I brought, like, I have a book right here too, because this book it's called, okay. You can't even see the cover anymore. Cause I've read it a few times, but <laughs> it's called, um, my name is hope. It's by John Mark Comer and it's on anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And it's such a good book. Um, I think that a lot of the things that we, um, our sins, our struggles, um, can be rooted in those things. And it's Mm -hmm. just an amazing way to look at it all from a faith-based perspective. And, um, the second book that I also brought, that's like, again, just really helped me. And I'm actually like doing this Bible study right now. So it's currently helping me with these things. Um, it's called the armor of God by Priscilla Shire. And it's amazing. Like sometimes Bible studies can be, you know, a lot of homework or like just kind of, um, I don't know. They can kind of leave you with kind of a bad taste in your mouth in the sense of like, again, I have to do all these things and I have to fix myself. But this is like that Bible study. I would encourage those two books because those, um, I mean, like I said what I, you know, felt like I was telling you to say, but, um, those two things just like opened up my eyes to everything. And, um, they're just really like tangible ways, I guess, to, um, just to be free of whatever, you know, we're, you know, enslaved to. And, um, the armor of God deals with like the enemy's, um, kind of just tactics and, um, just, kind of his role that we kind of forget about, to be honest. And, um, it's just so important, you know, we put on his armor and that we can live, um, victoriously because, you know, we can, it's just a matter of us positioning, our positioning ourselves in that daily, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. Those good. are so good. Those are so good. Um, and for everybody watching, we'll have the links for those books in this post as well. So you can just click it and buy it. Um, they sound incredible. I haven't even read them yet. So I'll be <laughs> clicking the links and buying yeah, them. Yeah, no, they're really good. <laughs> they sound awesome. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for sharing your story, for encouraging us. Um, I know you encouraged me deeply, and I know um, that you've encouraged countless women who are watching your story as well. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you, Emily, for having me. Absolutely. For all of you watching, make sure you connect with Ashley online. Um, that's the beauty of social media. And so we're not alone on this becoming journey at all. Um, so connect with Ashley, make sure to encourage her. And I know she would love to encourage you back. So Ashley, thank you. You rock, girl. Thank you so much. <laughs>